Welcome back. This is an overview to the concept of geodesign. Geodesign is a popular buzzword amongst GIS design professionals. The practice of geodesign, however, has been around for ages. The cutting edge technology has given it a whole new potential. At a bare minimum, virtually every organization does three primary things. Manage information, assess that information, and create or recreate goods or services. For our purposes, we can simplify this by saying, all organizations gather and analyze data, then design something based on the analysis. But this framework isn't just limited to organizations. This is also a basic framework for many types of individual research. An individual doing community-engaged research with a spatial emphasis will surely go through these three steps. Gather data, analyze it, and design a proposal or project, at minimum. But taking it a couple of steps further, we can apply the geographic approach to most research. This five-step process can and should be applied to any research project that involves spatial analysis. Often, this is an iterative process which begins by asking a geographic question with an ultimate goal of acting on the knowledge gained from the process. First, ask geographic questions. Second, acquire geographic resources. Third, explore geographic data. Fourth, analyze geographic information. And finally, act upon geographic knowledge. This final step in the approach is typically the design stage although at least some form of design is usually evolving through the process. This is why I would like to introduce you to the concept of geodesign. Let's start by breaking up the word. Geo can simply be defined as geographic space. Design can be defined as a noun or a verb. As a noun, design generally refers to some object or other entity. As a verb, it usually refers to a process or series of activities. So, geo plus design essentially means designing geographic space. But geodesign has many definitions, as you can see here, and the concept itself is evolving as technology progresses. The purpose of geodesign is to facilitate life in geographic space, that is, facilitating the lives of humans with their environment through design. Why is this important? Geodesign provides the ability to link data to the entity being designed to relevant science and value-based information, but also provides the framework for exploring issues from an interdisciplinary point of view and resolving conflicts between alternative value sets. Furthermore, Geodesign allows community-based researchers a digital opportunity to tie the environment, economy, and social equity together by providing conceptual models linked to physical place for decision makers. Simplifying this even further, modern geodesign allows researchers, planners, scientists, and designers a set of digital tools that can facilitate the complex integration of our built environment, earth systems, as well as social and economic issues. It can be used at all scales from the building and site level to community, regional, all the way up to global. And geodesign isn't necessarily static. With advanced geodesign technologies, a designer or planner can create dynamic, near real-time feedback models. For example, let's say you're researching a busy intersection that's known to be a safety hazard. You want to come up with some different scenarios to propose to the community to reduce the chance of an accident. But while you're at it, you also want to implement some green infrastructure by adding energy-efficient lighting, native vegetation, and a new stormwater management system all the while knowing you need to stay on budget. Assuming all the parameters are set up with the right geodesign tools, you could literally start drawing a digital intersection on a map and receive potential economic, social, and environmental effects from your desktop in near real time. Then compare those results to another intersection design in the same location. The feedback model tells you that you can reduce traffic accidents, install new lighting, introduce some stormwater retention techniques, and add new native vegetation all while staying under budget if you go with the two-lane intersection as opposed to the four-lane intersection. This is just one example of one of the many geodesign techniques that are becoming increasingly available. Now that you understand the purpose of geodesign, I'd like to introduce you to a wide array of concepts and capabilities of geodesign tools, all of which harness the power of geographic information science as well as third and even fourth dimensional analysis. I hope you've enjoyed the short introduction to geodesign and that you can apply this to your civically engaged research.